brake on, it's just not hard, so we don't go forward. There you go, now put a little bit of gas, so you can feel it, just kind of get, get to know the car. This is a perfect opportunity to just get to know it. If you need to brake a little bit, it's always easy to brake. There you go, give a little gas. That door just locked. By itself? Yeah. Alright. Okay, which way do I go? You just keep on, keep going. Okay. Follow the road. What do we got, lizards? Yep. Oh, there it is. Little guy. There's bridges right there. Enough cameras picking it up with the zip lines going here. These mountains apparently are 145 million years old. There's a zip line right above us. You can barely kind of make out the lines. And up this green trail trees there's a, another hanging bridge and those are all going to apparently that point everything's green still early in the year where the crazy heat has not taken effect on the flora that's beautiful Somebody's having a good time. There's a big family in front of us. I'm gonna take Colton here. He'll love this. My son's gonna be visiting next week from Arizona for about two and a half weeks for a spring break. What a great time for a 13 year old to spend spring break in Mexico. And possibly the summer as well. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. But these pools of water are seasonal. But there's these weird bugs, underwater bugs, swimming in it. This thing is just full of life. Amazing what Mother Nature creates. including the human species that are so loud in such a majestic place. is here. That's pretty awesome, huh? A little jungle. The mission for the next few days is to install the starboard side fuel tank. If you followed along with the previous episodes where I took the old steel tank out 
fabricated the new aluminum tank out of 5052 aluminum according to the ABYC standards. Now it's time to put her back in. So here's what we've got, what we have going on. So here she is. I fabricated this. I've actually the old stand, the old tank was a little bit larger. It actually sat on the on the hole itself. I I had it fabricated with um, with this flat surface, flat foot. I fabricated the stand for it. So today we're going to take the tank out, just move it out of the space. After we find the exact location of where I need to drill the penetration for the filler. This old one that I glassed in is not correct. I'd like to, because such a short distance, these hoses are not very flexible for the fuel. So I want to be pretty much straight up from this filler nozzle where I'm going to drill the new penetration in the, uh, in the top deck. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to oversize the, the holes, the hole itself. Um, it is an inch and a half here. I'm going to make it out of two inches. Then I'm going to refill it back with epoxy. Uh, and the reason behind that is so if there is a leak, uh, I want the water to be against epoxy, not against the core of the, of the deck itself. Once that's set, I'll redrill it, reset the tank, uh, connect my grounding strap, which is on top of the tank itself that goes to my, um, uh, correction my bonding strap that goes to my bonding system for the boat to um, to prevent any kind of electrolysis with the aluminum I'm going to make my connections for my fuel line my vents I'm going to attach my uh, my sight glass for my fuel level I don't have an actual uh, electronic or electric fuel uh, fuel gauge in here which is not necessary I have just a gravity fuel sight glass works perfectly i don't have to spend money on the additional components and then i'll build this bulkhead back up along with the uh the overhead i'll get some glue glue the the fabric this upholstery back to the hole itself and then i'll be tweaking on the finished carpentry on the outside you know when i had to take the tank out the only way to do that is to cut to cut this bulkhead so this is a separate piece i'll put this all back together nicely fabricate some nice trim pieces here get them stained and then redo my passageway and when i'm done it'll look like it all belonged there from day one forgive me if i'm a little bit ocd on my craftsmanship but anything works worth doing is worth doing 100 percent so that's going to be my edge outside edge right here that line i'm going to take maybe uh four measurements each side mark it and that's and then find the center point and that's going to be exactly where i'm going to drill a pilot pilot hole from underneath and then go back top side and then use my hole saw, two inch hole saw and re-drill. So it's going to be perfectly straight above this filler port. Alright. So this would be almost nearly impossible with the old tank. It took two people to get that bad boy out. I gotta get this thing out. Do my electrical connections for the bonding strap. And then mark the location of the pilot hole. Up, 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 up. Yeah. The other one was a factor of 10 in weight. this way because I got to be able to get to this little guy. In the process of installing the plumbing on the starboard side fuel tank, if you don't have the patience 
for not being able to pull the parts right off the shelf, go to the store and get them. Mexico is definitely not a place where you want to try your uh, test your level of patience. Let me show you what's uh, what's going on here. I brought these parts from the United States. Actually, I got this valve here locally, so I'm going to go back to the same store. It was over at Distributora 66. Now, I got a problem. I just called my metal guy. This fitting right here does not thread. I'm going to have to take this tank out. My previous guy didn't do this correctly. So these threads are wrong. So he's going to have to, we're going to have to take this tank out and he's going to have to modify it to fit these. So retap it or I'm not sure what he's going to do. It's his magic. Either way, it's not really that big of a deal. It's just, it's time. That's, that's what it is. It's time. I got the old parts. I'm missing a fitting, but I think that I'm going to be able to make this one work. Because I'm afraid that if I go to the store here, I'm not going to be able to find this this size. So I'll have to clean this off. This is the old one. Now the tank's made out of aluminum. 50-52. What ABYC recommends. But bronze and aluminum are not compatible. Meaning that the, there's going to be galvanic corrosion that is going to happen between two dissimilar metals so i can't use this i mean one way to get out of that situation would be to put a barrier between the threads of this and the aluminum because i think that this fits in here better Ta-da! So I'm using stainless steel. These are stainless steel parts. The, uh, they are uh, closer on the chart. Those two metals are closer on the chart, so they're not going to uh, affect each other adversely. So rather than putting a, uh, a Teflon uh, tape around it and hope that there's, there's not going to be any contact between the two, two metals, uh, I'm just going to put stainless steel in between. And then I'm going to use this within the stainless steel connections here because these two metals are okay together. So that's where we're at. Here's the glorious sound that is the lift pump transferring fuel from my port side tanks. Port forward to return starboard it's a slow process but I haven't done this in over a year big milestone ladies and gentlemen we have a monumental monumental mark she is alive after a year and one month yet let's let's figure out what we're going to say to him before we uh because he's only got limited time so let's figure out what we're going to say to him like hey him we're I'm in mexico i'm gonna tell him i love you <laughs> <laughs> i love you i just want to tell you this before i die because i know you're not dying before me he's very mellow so uh <laughs> when you say something he's gonna be very calm and, okay. and funny and relaxed and he's he's so low-key that you're going to be surprised but uh 
and he's a golfer and I just bought him some new golf balls. <laughs> so I sent him some personalized golf balls for his birthday. So he's going to be happy to hear mm -hmm. about that. But, uh, let's call, let's just call for the fuck of it. Cause he just texted me, um, yesterday. Robbie Creer. Yeah. The guy from the doors. Robbie. Hey there. Hey, it's Greg. How are you? Yeah. Good. What's you up to? Oh, just uh, doing some recording. Uh, hey, listen, well, I'm I'm with a. Uh, I'll let you go. I'm just with a couple of friends here in Mexico. We love you, and uh, you're so the. It's so huge down here. Like the music is so crazy down here. <laughs> We're in San Carlos, which is, uh, um, yeah, Sonora, Mexico. Um, I think you went to Puerto Vallarta, right, when you were younger? Yeah, I've been all over Mexico. Yeah. I remember if I was in San Carlos. What's that close to? It's like six hours south of Tucson. It's like... Um, yeah, it's like in it's kind of like in northern Mexico. I'm, I'm moving down to Puerto Escondido, which is way down south. But uh, I just want to check in with you and say hi and tell you thank you for. Uh, gosh, we we everybody here is so stoked on your music and stuff. And oh, I know the tours are big in Mexico. Yes. Yeah, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I did a song called "The Mosquito." No, 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 mosquito which uh, it was after Jim died, and I, I sang it. And it's probably the best-selling song other than Light My Fire, only because uh, it was in Spanish. And Spanish <laughs> and, uh, so many people, uh, you know, copied that song and redid it. Uh, ask your Mexican buddies to stand there as they heard it. Now, you know, what's funny is I saw your interview with uh, Densmore and you were talking about your favorite song and, and you mentioned that song and, and John looked at you like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, that's cool. So, uh, what, uh, yeah, so how's your golf game? Is you, are you, are you even playing any golf at all with all the craziness there? Uh, it's been, the weather hasn't been that good for golf lately, but okay. I've been using your balls. Just uh, use some uh, the other day. Awesome, uh, awesome. And those are the ones you like, right? Yeah, made me think of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Now it's like you know what? I it's a, it's a little thing that I can send you for all the things you've you've provided for me in the past five years or so, and. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I know I know you're busy, and I just wanted to shoot out. I, I'm with a friend of mine named Paul and Teresa right now, and we just wanted that they wanted to shout out to you from Mexico down here. Here's Paul. Say hi, hi. Bobby. Hi, if, Bobby, if my words ever ring any matter in the ether of of, of reality, I, I am so honored to be speaking with you. The just the. Uh, uh, icon of American music. Thank you for um, for everything you do. And Teresa. Hello. I am so, so honored to just be here listening to you. And thank you. Thank you for everything. Thanks, Robbie. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down here and it's kind of crazy. I'm down here in the land. I'll come up and see you in uh, 23. But, but I tell you what, I'm in the land down here where you wouldn't believe how insane your music is it's 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 so it's so much fun because these guys are so into your music but uh yeah yeah it's all good man but Love uh your music yeah and uh yeah you're right right yes. yeah yes. well bullshit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh exactly, my god i love exactly. this guy all right, my friend. I got to get back to recording. All right, Robbie, take care. Thanks for your time. Okay. Bye-bye. Wow. Oh, my wow. God. <laughs> <laughs>